day of Pentecost, it was 50 days after Jesus was raised from the dead. A little less. And there were about 10,000 people assembled in the court of the Gentiles in the Jewish temple. Peter stood up and he began to preach. And people were really excited because they could hear the testimonies of God. Oh, I forgot to send the children away. All right? It is time for the children to go and have a lesson for themselves. Uh, Sasha, my grandmother, is going to take the children to a better place. <laughs> Give them to Sasha. I mean that. Uh, and so see, Peter stood up. And everybody had been hearing the, the wonderful things that God had done. She went that way. <laughs> and they'd been hearing the wonderful things that God had done and all the miracles in their own language. And they were people from all over the world. The Jewish diaspora would save their money and they would come to the homeland once in a lifetime. And they'd spend about a year. They'd have to catch the winds right coming. They would spend about six months. Then they'd get on a boat and they'd catch the winds going back. And so they would want to make sure that they got there for Passover and then Pentecost. Some people would risk staying for Day of Atonement and, and the, the Feast of Tabernacles. And so they were there for Pentecost, one of the feasts. And they were hearing the Word of God. They were hearing testimonies of how great God in their own language. And that was a big surprise for them. And Peter stood up and he concluded his sermon by saying this. Therefore let all of Israel be assured of this, that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. And when he said this, their heart was cut to the quick. Some of you know what cut to the quick means, don't you? You ever get a splinter right underneath your nail and a big one? <laughs> the Spirit of God touched these people and they felt the guilt of what they had done. Maybe they weren't directly involved with the crucifixion of Jesus, but they realized that Jesus was the promised Messiah and they had missed it. And when they heard this, the people said, Peter, what shall we do? It's kind of like, I, I was in Las Vegas and I was kind of cleaning up and so I threw out someone's broken uh, uh, car lens. It's something you put your headlights on and then turn the headlights. And I, the thing was clearly cracked. He'd been in an accident. And I said to him, you know, hey, I did this. He said, oh, no, man, I was keeping that. Uh, in case my other lens goes out, uh, then, you know, it's all about $300. And I said, well, what can I do to make you whole on this? And sometimes that's what people feel. What can I do? I've done something terrible. This terrible that they did was really, really bad. When you crucify your Savior, or stand by and let it happen, that's terrible. And they felt it. What shall we do? So here's what Peter said. Repent 
and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Repent. So, repent, the Greek word meaning metanoia, means change the way you think. In the Gospel of St. Luke, when uh, John the baptizer was preaching, he was preaching the baptism of repentance. He said, bring forth fruits in keeping with your repentance. Sometimes we think of repentance as changing what we do. I know one person who got baptized, and they were going to really repent. They were going to give up sugar. They were going to give up coffee. They were going to give up, uh, go to a thousand calorie diet. They were going to give up smoking, and they were going to give up drinking. You know what happens to a person when they do all of those all at once? Usually, within about 12 hours, they begin to feel awful. I mean, really awful. I mean, I mean, it's like the worst flu is terrible. So they, 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 that was their notion of repenting. They were going to give up this, and give up this, and give up this, and give up this. And sometimes when people try to give up too much, that kind of repentance, then they fail. So this particular person, within about a day and a half, they were smoking again. They were drinking coffee again, and they were eating, going to the donut shop again. Why? Just to stop that horrible, horrible feeling. But repentance is a way of changing your thinking. And the way I like to think of it is you go on the lawn, and all of a sudden, you stop yourself. And you look around and figure out where God is, and then you start going that direction. You want to go the direction of God and put time in your life to go God's way. It doesn't mean you're instantly there and all of a sudden you are perfect and you never make another mistake in your life. You never have another bad thought in your life. Uh, you never have another bad habit in your life. The, all the struggles are over. Repentance doesn't mean that at all. And in our own strength, we can't do it. When you repent and you go the direction of God, He gives us His grace. We were saying about grace. And grace is a heavy thing that can come upon you and change your want-tos. And change your desires. And change your thinking. It says also here that you're to do it for the gift of the Holy Spirit. The gift of the Holy Spirit. You know, Jesus once said, Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find not. And the door will be opened for all who ask receive and all who seek. Like the lost the child. And oh, not like I know you're in there, and I'm not going to stop knocking till you open the door. I can knock me. Jesus said, How much more will your heavenly Father give you the Holy Spirit if you ask? Right. Are you struggling with something? Are you having trouble with something? You have bad desires and you're guilty because of it? Start by asking God for His Holy Spirit. Lord, boy, this is too much for me. I just can't do it. But I receive your Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Right. You know, some people have not because they don't ask. I remember a salesman once said, I make him say no three times. He's not only going to ask, 
He's going to ask again, and he's going to ask again. If you want to repent, not just grit your teeth tighter, not just suffer a little bit more, but start by asking God for his Holy Spirit and the grace that comes with him. Remember, God always has an alternative to what you're doing that's not so good. Huh? God has created us to have fellowship with Him and have His love and all kinds of good things. God wants us to experience all good things. you got to believe that. And then look around to see what He has provided for you as a substitute for some of the stuff you're doing. So repentance. Repent and be baptized. So when they were baptized, this was the most dramatic baptism. First of all, there's 10,000 people. They're kind of shoulder to shoulder, almost all men. They're from all over the Mediterranean. And here is a man who stands up, which, we, which the Romans had designated as now the leader of the terrorist organization, organization called Christians. Huh? Christians were designated as a rebel organization. That's why they crucified Jesus. Pontius Pilate, he says, what should I do with your king? He was making himself to be the king of the Jews. That was what was on his cross. Jesus of Nazareth, king of the Jews. And the followers were designated as rebels also. So what did Rome do with rebels? They put them on crosses to suffer and to die. So here is the leader of the rebel group, the Christians. Number two in line, they've not fought number one, that's Jesus. And here is St. Peter standing up. And he says, repent and be baptized. If you were baptized, you were identifying with this rebel group. Now, the Jews understood about baptism. If you were a Gentile and you wanted to convert to become a Jew, uh, then you'd go through classes and you'd go to a synagogue and you'd learn all your stuff and you'd pass your catechisms. And then you'd get a sponsor. And then you would go to the local synagogue and say, I want to be baptized. And they'd have a pool like this, only a little colder. <laughs> and you would walk down into the, the water. And then the synagogue leader would insult you. Look at this dog of a Gentile. Buried in sin. On his way to hell. I mean, he was going to lay it on. I mean, uh, hellfire and damnation on this poor guy. And he felt real bad. And then he would stop. And then the guy would give his testimony of why he wanted to become a Jew. And then he would baptize himself. The, the, the leader of the synagogue didn't take him under. He would dip underneath. And then when he came up, the leader of the synagogue would say, Behold, a new man, a child of God, a citizen of heaven. And he would go through everything. He would say it was a major change. So Jews who, who went to synagogue got to see this kind of thing. So here is St. Peter. He says, Repent and be baptized. Whoa. And they knew that by being baptized, it was like raising the Ukrainian flag in Moscow. They are being labeled as a rebel. They didn't care. 
The Spirit of God was upon them, and they felt that they had to do this, or they would be eternally damned. That's why that baptism was so significant. They were going to be a Christian, no matter what. It says, that day, of that crowd of 10,000 people, 3,000 people were baptized. Now, one of my big things when I read the Bible has to do with what I would call logistics. How do you baptize 3,000 people in one day? Uh, it'd be a good thing if you believed in sprinkling. <laughs> the Jewish baptism was primarily immersion. John the baptizer was primarily immersion. Where do you go to get baptized 3,000 people. And, and when they did it, they had to confess Christ. I want Jesus to be my Savior. I want Jesus to be my Lord. I will follow Him. I still haven't got an answer figured that out. Good thing that there were, first of all, 12 apostles. And there were 120 in the upper room. And there were 500 that uh, had witnessed Jesus' ascension, and they could probably help in the baptism. Don't know how they did it. There were some places to get baptized in the court of the, the, uh, the, the Gentiles, but I had no clue how you can do 3,000. Did you ever figure out uh, how much time it would take? How much time it would take if we wanted to have 3,000 people march in on this side baptize himself and come out on the other side. You can't figure out how to do that in one day. And somebody would have to wear a black t-shirt and the water would change. <laughs> you ever wore something that you had a, a red new t-shirt? You had all your white t-shirts and white underwear and other things like that. And all of a sudden, Pull up, you wash, and everything's pink. Has anyone ever done that? I sure did. <laughs> so here it is the most dynamic baptism that took place. They were saying, I want to be a Christian. There are two significances here that I mentioned. Number one, the forgiveness of sins. And that's what it means for some people, is that. Lord, I come and I give myself to you and I want you to forgive all my past. I want to start anew with you. When I ask people, when I baptize them, what do you want this baptism to mean for you? The most common answer is, I want a new beginning in Christ. And that's highly, highly popular. That's that's what we want. And when we are being baptized, receive God's forgiveness. It's there. It's kind of like if I sit up here on, on the altar here and I put $100 bills down and I said, all right, uh, anyone who wants one, come up and do it. You know what would happen? Some people would be frozen and then with one person. I'm going to take a chance. And they'd come up here and they'd take one, one, one hundred dollar bill. The forgiveness of God is right here, but sometimes we're afraid to receive it. We have to do something for it. We have to do good deeds or something. No, it's the grace of God. Just like John Newton, who had transported 20,000 slaves, he received the grace of God and the forgiveness of God. And God had him healed. Because without the forgiveness of God and, and really receiving it and starting to feel it, the devil kind of works guilt on us. You know, what, why should God answer any of your prayers? You're such a terrible person. You feel real bad about yourself, and, and that's not why God wants you to. He wants you to know that you are a child of God and He wants to bless you and give you all good things. And He wants
wants you to start a new adventure with him. And so it starts with baptism that sometimes means receiving, really receiving the forgiveness of us. Right there? Lord, I believe that you forgave me. You forgave me and you're forgiving me. And we're working it through. But I'm not going to feel guilty on this anymore. And when I do, then I'll just receive it again. And it changes who you are and how you feel and how you think. Remember, repentance is a change in how you think. One of the things that has to do with repentance is to say, well, Lord, you know, I'm going to look at the Bible and see what you say is what is right and what is wrong. You know, some people are, are pushed into the, the mold of the culture and and they've got friends and their parents have told them things and they have a sense of what is right and wrong. When you repent and you stop yourself and you turn towards God, you go towards Him, you begin to look at the Bible and say, now, now what, what did you have in mind here? I recognize that my parents and my culture and my friends and everything have been giving me some values. What are your values? What's important to you? What's right and what is wrong? That's part of repentance. It's not, doesn't just stop with, oh God, I receive your forgiveness. La, 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 let's go on with our life and we don't do anything else with God. Look at the Bible and say, no, but what would please you? That's part of repentance. Because that part of repentance changes the way you think and the way you understand the world. Remember, there's a difference between your thinking and what you do. And so the first thing in your thinking is understanding, well, what does God want? I mean, you may not be able to do it. You may be an alcoholic and, and you just can't stop. You receive the grace of God, and we should understand that. The second thing it says, and we've already touched on this, is that the baptism they had, it says, This promise is to you the promise of the Holy Spirit. So, a good thing to do is every day, you get up and you say, Lord, if I ask for the Holy Spirit, you will give. Lord, I ask you to fill me again with your Holy Spirit that I might see this world through your eyes. How many of you, I'm not going to ask that. I was going to say, how many of you this morning stood up and say, today is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Fill me again with your Holy Spirit that I might worship you. That's a good way to start. Every day. It kind of takes a discipline, though. You know, there's some people that every morning when they start, they have a little pillbox there, and they start with this, they've got some better. Morning, noon, dinner, and evening. And they, you know, take all their stuff at the right time and so on. It's, it's kind of a discipline. We kind of have to say to ourselves, well, it's morning. Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit, I pray. God, just from here, that church grew. And strangely enough, all these people who were labeled by Rome as rebels were not bothered. Now, the, the Jewish establishment there, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the others like that, uh, they didn't persecute the church initially either. It was, there was a lot. Later on they did. But it didn't matter. The people that said, Jesus is my Savior, Jesus is my Lord, changed the world. And it says these people then would go and uh, they would invite the apostles into their house and says, all right, teach us the teachings of Jesus. 
they would have Holy Communion about G Jesus uh, had said uh, this bread is my body and this cup is my, my blood for the remission of sins and they would have Holy Communion they would do good to people, some people who had property would sell it. Now it's an interesting thing, if you were into real estate, this might be a, an interesting piece of trivia for you. The year that this happened, the properties were kind of at the top. And so if you had extra properties and you sold them, you made a lot of money. But if you held on to it for another five or ten years, it would be worth about half the price. So people who felt the Spirit of God and wanted to help people who were in need, they would sell some of their property. Now I'm not saying for you to do this, but I'm saying that they were so touched by the Holy Spirit and they wanted so much that they were willing to part with some of their wealth and riches. And it was a wonderful thing. The church grew. No one was really in need. There were widows that were there and they were having trouble and struggles and the church took care of them. They had food distribution for the, the poor and the hungry. And it was a wonderful outreach of the church. They were producing fruits in keeping with their change of thinking, that is, repentance. But what do I want for you today? I want you to stop what you do. I want you to figure out which direction God is and start going His way. And every day, ask to be filled with Holy Spirit and see what wonderful plan God has for you to do what good you can do. Now maybe there's someone here today that feels that if they were to die today they would not go to be with God in heaven. They just, they just don't do it. Jesus said if you believe in your heart, or the Apostle Paul said, if you believe in your heart that Jesus was raised from the dead and uh, uh, you confess Jesus as the Lord, you shall be saved. That's what baptism is all about. Believing and confessing. So, we're going to pray a prayer today, and maybe this is the prayer that you need to pray. I don't want anybody to stand up all attention to themselves. And we're all going to pray this prayer, so repeat after me. And it's for that one or two people here that the Spirit of God is touching them. They're cut to a quick. And they know that if they were to die today, they would not go to be with God in heaven. But they want to. Let's all pray this prayer aloud. Dear God, Dear God, Dear God I want to be a Christian. I want to be a Christian. I believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus. He died on the cross. He died on the cross for my sins. For my sins. You raised him from the dead. You raised him from the dead. Dear God. Dear God. I want Jesus. I want Jesus to be my savior. To be my savior. I want to follow him as Lord. I want to follow him. In the power of your spirit. In the power of your spirit. Amen. 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 Amen.